Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I've got a couple of updates for the battery powered supply that I created in the last video that I think is gonna make it just perfect. So I really enjoyed making the battery powered supply last week and for the most part it works great, but there are a couple of missing features. The first one is that it won't charge an iPhone as I mentioned in the last video. And that's because there's certain voltages that need to be present on the data pins, not just on the power pins in order for it to work. In this video, we're gonna add two voltage dividers so that we're supplying the right voltage to those pins and so that we're getting a working functional iPhone charging unit. The second thing missing was a low voltage cutoff. And a couple of viewers pointed out that without it, it's not going to stop the battery from discharging below the level that the charger can charge it back up again. I mistakenly thought that the DeWalt batteries had that built in, but it turns out it's up to the individual tool to stop using the battery when the voltage gets too low. Of course, as a battery drains or as it's being used up, the voltage of the battery continues to drop. And so we wanna make sure that we add protection into our battery power supply so that as the voltage drops, it eventually reaches a point where the supply doesn't keep draining the battery. Those are the two features that I wanna add. So if you wanna see this battery powered supply reach its full potential, let's get into it. Taking a look again at the wiring diagram for the Apple USB adapter, what we see here is that we need to have a voltage divider that evenly splits the voltage on pin two to two and a half volts and changes it to two volts between ground and the voltage divider on pin three. A removable screws once again using the security bit Torx. And with that done, I have it open again. I'm gonna test fit my proto board, which is what I'm gonna solder all the project to. And I'm using the same size proto board as a breadboard so that I can see where my components fit. I'm gonna lay out the voltage dividers here to see if uh, they do fit properly and they're going to be in the right positions and simply voltage dividing is going to take the voltage 5 volts and it's going to break that up across two different resistors and give us the different values that we need. I'm going to test out the voltage divider by connecting it to the 5 volt output of the buck converter and then I'm going to see what the actual voltage is and make sure that it's what it should be in the wiring diagram. I forgot to attach the battery so let's try it again with the battery. And here I am getting 2.4 and 2.8, which when we solder it all up should be much closer to 2.7 and 2.5. Next, I'm gonna create a voltage divider for the battery level. And this is going to uh, take the input of the battery, which is about 20 volts, and it's gonna convert it to a value between zero and five, which is what I'm going to use to tell the Arduino what the battery level is. Now, I used a 10K resistor and a 2K resistor, which is actually uh, about a five to one conversion. And that's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna need to know what those values are. So when I test it out, again, I'm getting 20.3 and I'm getting 3.3 on the output. And that lets me know that's what it's gonna be when I hook it up. Next, I'm just gonna transfer all these components to the proto board and then solder them in place. It's nice to put them on the breadboard first to make sure all your connections are what they should be but then the proto board is where you can make your permanent solder connection. So I'm gonna put those in place, add some solder, and sure enough, it will be nice and secure. And here you can see again, the layout of the resistors. Next, I'm gonna solder the leads of the USB adapter and I'm going to solder them in place with the power positive, volt, positive voltage to the red, the ground to the black, white to pin two and green to pin three. We'll clean up all of the backside with flush cutting side cutters and then we're gonna see that finished product. Nice and neat and compact. I also need to add a couple of leads to connect to the output of the buck converter. So I'm adding a plus five well, volt is gonna be red and the ground is going to be brown. Once again, I'm gonna test that it works by hooking it up to the actual converter and seeing if indeed I can now measure the voltages that I expected to. Attaching the battery this time, uh, I am getting 5.1, 2, and 2.5. And so now I can try it with an actual phone. Plug my phone in, 
Sure enough, it charges. The next step is to solder in an Arduino Nano, which is what I'm gonna to use to control the battery cutoff voltage. I'm using some female pin headers, which are going to allow me to remove the Arduino Nano if I wanna use it for another project. I'm just gonna move along and solder all of those terminals. With that in place, I'm now gonna move over the voltage divider for the input of the battery voltage, and I'm simply gonna connect those up, same, and solder them in place. And then I'm gonna add jumpers to connect the ground to the ground pin of the Arduino. And I need to also take that voltage divider voltage and put it to pin A0. I could use any of the analog pins, but I, choose, I chose to use A0 in this case. So with that soldered in place, I also need to add power for the Arduino. So I'm adding five voltage power to the Arduino and also tying the ground pin of the Arduino to the ground of the battery as well. In order for the voltage divider to work and work as an input, I'm gonna need the ground of the battery and the ground of the Arduino to be tied together. Also just connecting the five volt input to the rails on the proto board so that I can use it to power all of the five volt. Those main connections done, I also need to include uh, the connections to install the relay to the Arduino. The Arduino is gonna control the relay, which will allow the load to be switched on and off. And I'm only showing the connections for one relay, but because I'm using two different voltages, I'll actually need two relays, but you get the point. If you can do it for one, you can do it for two or more, depending on how many voltages you wanna supply. You'll need to be able to turn on or off the voltage to all of those outputs in order to prevent the battery from over draining. I used a pretty simple Arduino code here. Simply uh, set the relay pin as pin two, the digital output. I used the battery input as A0, the battery value as a placeholder. And then I'm gonna, for the test sake, I'm gonna uh, declare the relay pin as an output, begin the serial terminal, and then when I run it, I'm going to be able to attach the battery and see what value it actually puts using my voltage divider into that A0 input. Now, when I check the 20 volt batteries, I was getting around 740. When I checked the 12 volt battery, I got about 420. So I'm gonna use those values in order to find out what I should be setting my thresholds at. You can see here, I chose to set the thresholds at 740 for the top and for uh, 610 as the minimum, which would be about 16 and a half volts. Conventional wisdom seems to be that DeWalt chargers uh, only charge at about 16 volts and higher. So I set a little bit of a buffer and 16 and a half volts is as low as I'm gonna let it go. And then on the 12 volt batteries, I'm gonna allow it to go down to 10 volts. So I need to declare that as well. Now, if you look at the code that I ended up using, you can see the finished product here that in my loop section, what I'm just gonna do here is lay out different values and then choose if the battery reading is within those values that we want. It's going to allow the relay to be turned high or connected. And if the value is outside of the values that we want, then it's going to not be connected. That's going to determine whether or not a load will be supplied by the battery or not. I really like the idea of using the relays here because you get an audible click when you snap a battery in place and that lets you know that the battery is charged to an acceptable level. If you don't hear the click, then you know that the battery is not uh, the appropriate level in order to be used to power a project. In order to make it all fit, I need to remove another support post and then I'm going to use hot glue to glue the components in place. Now, I did realize when I did this that I had tied the input to the five volt uh, for the USB adapter and I had tied that permanently to five volts. Instead, I needed to be controlled by the relay. So I needed to go in and desolder that from the proto board and then add a jumper that's going to go to my relay. When the soldering is complete, I now have two wires that connect to the input side of the converter, which is the battery voltage. I have two wires that connect to the output of the five volt, and then I have two wires that are gonna connect to the relay one that's gonna be the power incoming from the five volt and another that's going to be connected to the five volt USB adapter, which is going to power or charge electronics. 
should have another relay for other voltages that you're going to do because you need to be able to switch those as well. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm only using one relay to control just one of the voltages. Now I put all the pieces back together, make sure the wires are tucked in. And it's time to screw the case back together. A chance to test it out finally once again. If I plug in a 12 volt, it does click and tell you that it's working. And if I plug a 20 volt in, again, you get that satisfying click of the relay turning on. I'm going to try it again with my phone just to make sure that it is charging properly. And I've accomplished the two purposes that I had in mind, creating a low battery cutoff and also charging an Apple product. Success all around. In version 1.1 of my battery charger power supply is now complete. So it takes a little electrical know-how, some research, and some time to make all this work together. But in the end, for about $40, you still get the full functionality of converting one of these chargers into a supply that you can simply clip batteries in and out of and have it work flawlessly. I hope that gives you the confidence to try these kinds of hacks on your own power tool brand. And I hope that if you find value in them, that you'll leave us a comment below, subscribe to our channel and tell friends and family about it. Until next time in all your DIY projects and the refinements they require, don't be afraid to be balder.